Welcome to this lesson on energy. The question of the day, what are some forms of energy that you already know? Energy is defined as the ability to do work, and we measure that in joules, J-O-U-L-E-S, with a capital J. Joules is the metric unit, the base unit, and then we can add prefixes to that. So we can have kilojoules, millijoules, scented joules, no one uses those. Um, it's mostly joules and kilojoules. Um, and then, I mean, this definition of energy does seem a little bit technical. The way I like to define it is really anything that's not matter. Examples would be heat, light, electricity, chemical energy, like the food energy stored in chemical bonds. Um, there's lots of different types of energy. And just like we can rearrange matter, we can change forms of energy. So you can take chemical energy that is in the chemical bonds of food, and then your body will digest it, and then it will turn it into energy. This would be kinetic energy because I am using it to move. There is some specific vocabulary to learning energy. And when we talk about that in chemistry, we often talk about it in terms of the system and the surroundings. So the system is really the thing that you are studying and the surroundings is everything else. So if we are looking specifically at a chemical reaction, that would be our system and the surroundings would be the beaker, the air, the lab bench, the entire universe, really, there's no limit to the surroundings. But typically we just talk about, um, you know, what's right around. Energy can move from one object or area to another, and we would describe that as energy flow. Sometimes we'll use um, the term heat flow, and a lot of the time that is actually referring to heat energy, but we will occasionally use heat in place of the word energy. Um, when this happens, energy is going to move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So what that really means is that hot stuff will warm up cold stuff. Um, and this is where things are going to sound a little bit strange. In the wintertime, which if you're watching this as uh, the videos come out, then it's probably winter if you're in the northern hemisphere. And uh, you may open the door or window and it's very cold winter air outside what we tend to say is, oh, shut the door, shut the window, you're letting in the cold. But truthfully, there is there is no cold. <laughs> cold is just the absence of heat. So really what happens is that the warm air that's inside of your house will rush outside, leaving an empty pocket for it to feel cold. If you leave your door open for too long, all of the hot, warm air in the house is going to rush out of the house. It's not the cold air coming in, it's actually the hot going out. We can define this a little bit better. When we talk about chemical reactions, um, we will reference the direction of energy flow. So if energy is leaving our system or leaving the chemical reaction, we would call that exothermic. I like to say exo, like exit, helps me remember that exothermic reactions are reactions that release energy. And when this happens, their energy value is going to be negative. It's negative because they lose energy. Think of math class. If we talk about our reactions in terms of their ability to do work or to have work done on them, in an exothermic reaction, the work is done by the system. The system itself is doing the work. So in this case, the energy is being used basically to do the work and then it's lost. So it is going to move from the system out to the surroundings. This is how we get into the concept of reactions feeling hot. If the reaction, you, you can touch it, some reactions you can touch, others are too hot and you can't. But let's imagine that this reaction, you mix these two chemicals together and then it warms up. That would be exothermic. The reaction itself is um, doing the work. The work is done by the system. The energy is released, and then you can feel that energy as thermal energy uh, warming the surroundings. That's really what you're feeling. The opposite is true in an endothermic reaction. I like to say that the energy enters the system because it helps me to remember it. And in this case, your energy value is going to be positive because it is absorbing energy from the surroundings. So the surroundings are giving energy to the system. The work is done on the system, meaning that the surroundings are putting the energy into that system. 
Um, so it would look a lot like this. We have an arrow representing the energy coming into the system from the surroundings. Now what's gonna happen is that this is going to feel cold. And like we said before, when energy moves or heat energy moves out, like out of your house, it leaves that pocket of cold energy, not really energy, cold air, coldness, lack of energy. Um, so what's gonna happen here is that your beaker flask reaction vessel is going to feel cold because all of the heat that it had went into the system. This is a lot to keep straight. So if it was confusing, please make sure to go back, re-listen to everything. If you still have questions, leave a comment below. I'd be happy to help you out. Subscribe so you don't miss the next lesson and I will see you there. Bye.